Lori Hacking died because her husband was a liar and he couldn't face the truth. At 10.07 a.m. on July 19, 2004, Mark Hacking contacted the Salt Lake City Police and he reported that his wife had gone running and she hadn't come back home yet. Then at 10.46 a.m., he called them back and said that he had gone out to the canyon where she usually went running and her car was there, but she was gone. Immediately, their community offered to help and loads of people volunteered. Mark got in front of TV cameras that day and he said he was so grateful to have everyone there. And for anybody who knew the Mormon couple, there was really no reason to believe that he would have been a suspect in the first place. The two had been happily married since 1999. Uh, family had recently been told that Lori was five weeks pregnant. She had just given her notice at her job where she worked as a stockbroker's assistant. They were both about to leave Utah so that they could go to North Carolina so that Mark could attend the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill School of Medicine. But the police weren't as trusting as his neighbors, and they looked into his phone records almost immediately, and they were perplexed to find that Mark didn't call his family after he first found Lori missing. No, Mark decided to call and look for cheap mattresses. Then, when they went to his house, they noticed that Lori's purse, wallet, and car keys were still in the couple's apartment. Of course, Lori couldn't drive to the canyon if she didn't have her car keys. Then they noticed that Lori's driver's seat had been adjusted for someone who was much taller than Lori to be in the driver's seat. While all this is going on, police get a call saying that Mark is outside of a hotel wearing nothing but his sandals running around the following morning. So they let him check himself into a psychiatric facility. On July 31st, that's when everything started to click. And both Mark and Lori's families discovered that Mark hadn't been accepted to medical school. In fact, he had never even graduated from the University of Utah in 2004, like he said. He had dropped out in 2002 and just continued to pretend to go to classes and buy textbooks and fake write term papers. He even traveled across the country to pretend to fake interviews at medical schools. Mark freaked out when Lori called the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill inquiring about financial aid for her husband and was told that he wasn't a student there. She was upset, but Mark told her that it was just a computer error and he had fixed everything. On July 24th, he confessed to his brothers that he and Lori had gotten into a fight on the 18th when he told her the truth about medical school. Then he told his brothers that he shot her while she was asleep and then put her body in a dumpster. He was charged with first degree murder on August 9th and pled guilty on August 15th. The police search for Lori's body took two months of them going to the local municipal landfill. And because her remains were too decomposed to verify if she actually was pregnant, Mark couldn't face the death penalty. The legal guidelines at the time said that he had to be sentenced a minimum of six years in prison, but ultimately he was given life with 30 year minimum and he will be eligible for parole in 2035. Mark's ability to be a complete and total pathological liar is something that psychiatrists and other people have looked into. In 2006, it was found that he was providing autographs to murder memorabilia websites, and he voluntarily agreed to stop once it was brought to the government's attention. He has also apparently written a memoir while in prison as well. His family did release a statement that had a quote at the end from him where he discussed how lies really hurt people and he wishes that he could give Lori back to her family. But I find that statement a little disingenuous. But that's just me.